Hello everyone and welcome back to this Let's Play a series of Star Trek Online. My name is Winters and you are very, very welcome. So, for this episode, we are going to... we're actually going to cover a number of different things. Uh, the first of which is a system that is called uh, the PBEQs or PBE system. Uh, to access this system, you go to the bottom of the minimap where the mouse is mousing over now and you click on the PVEQ button and it opens up the PVEQ list. For anyone that doesn't know, PVE stands for Player vs. Environment. And as we scroll down here we can see there are a very, very wide variety of selections. And this is replayable content. Um, intended for endgame. Uh, I know that you can replay story missions um, and you can get rewards for them, but this is intended as the main replayable content for endgame. Um, down along the left hand side here there are a number of filters to filter out uh, the different various types of cues uh, because the main thing that you would play these cues for are marks and there's a wide variety of marks available in game there are uh, t basically there's um, I suppose you could say there's three types um, there's uh, fleet marks there's reputation marks which are divided up into uh, 12 subcategories currently that is and then there's elite marks um, and again they're divided between the 12 subcategories um, so all you have to do is uh, pick a mission um, from the list uh, so let's say if we wanted uh, to get some fleet marks for example we just click on fleet marks there and it displays a full list of all the missions that can reward fleet marks if we were looking for specifically Romulan marks we simply click on that and the list populates if we were looking for Dyson marks again it populates a list of all the cues that can give Dyson marks um, Right, uh, the next thing I want to talk about is difficulty. Um, there are three different types of difficulty. There is normal difficulty, which is represented by this icon, uh, which is just normal, uh, the one chevron. Then you have advanced difficulty, which is displayed by this icon, which is the two chevrons. And then you have elite difficulty, which is this one, displayed by the three chevrons. Now, if you're not familiar with any of these missions, obviously the best thing to do is to play the normal version of the queue first. But, not all queues have a normal or advanced version. For example, this one, Battle of Corfez, there is only an elite version of that queue. There is no normal and advanced. Um, Azor Nebula Rescue, there is no elite version of that queue in the game currently. There is only normal and advanced difficulty. Uh, but some queues do have normal, advanced, and elite. Um, oh, and likewise, some queues only have a normal dif difficulty as well. Um, such as this one here, the Big Dig. Um, right. Uh, normal queues um, are obviously the easiest ones. Um, there, When you play any of them, there are a number of optional objectives. The more objectives you complete, the higher your payout will be for that particular queue. Doing advanced queues, uh, there are optional objectives as well, uh, but usually a timer. And um, by playing advanced content, there is a chance, if you blow up, that you might sustain damage to your ship, which you can repair for free at the shipyard. And I've shown you that before uh, in previous episodes. Elite content, however, um, there is no such thing as optional objectives. There are only secondary objectives that must be completed. If you proceed through the mission without completing a, a secondary objective, you will instantly fail that mission and uh, end up with nothing. Uh, so very, very important to remember that elite queues do not have optionals. They have secondary objectives that must be completed, otherwise you fail. 
Uh, the difficulty is um, obviously harder. Uh, enemies have much higher hit points, for example. Um, and uh, usually you uh, have a time constraint and uh, additional objectives for some of them as well. Right, so that's pretty much uh, everything to do with PvE queues. Um, one thing I do want to show you before we actually jump into one is right here, this button, View Cooldowns. So every time you play a queue for a certain type of mark reward, so let's say if um, we played, do, 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 um, let's say if we played this queue and we were going for Iconian marks, there is a daily bonus for all different types of marks. Um, what I mean is, the first time you play a queue for a certain type of mark, you will, upon successful completion, not only get the base standard rewards for that mission but you will also gain a daily bonus on top of it which uh, consists of 55 marks and if you click on view cooldowns here you can see all the different types of marks um, that are available for the daily bonus and if there's any seasonal events going on like currently right now the summer event is going on and it's saying that I can uh, um, do that uh, mission right now and uh, it's not on uh, lockout. Right. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, that's pretty much everything to do with PvE queues. Um, what we are going to do next is we're going to pick this, this one here, uh, which is Crystalline Catastrophe, and we're going to do it on Advanced Difficulty. Now, the reason why I'm doing this on advanced difficulty is because this is probably one of the easiest missions in game and not that many players actually play this on normal the majority of players play this mission on advanced like I would say 95 percent of the player base plays this on advanced because it is just so easy and to queue up, all you have to do is select the queue, put a check mark in this box here, and then when you get the pop-up, just hit accept. And that's it. You will load into that mission. Uh, once you complete the mission, uh, it will go on a 30-minute cooldown before you can replay it again. But anyway, uh, it's popped for us now, so hopefully we will jump in there in a couple of seconds, and we can begin Crystalline Catastrophe. And when we do get in there, uh, I will start explaining uh, the objectives and what you're supposed to do in the mission. Let's see, did it? It looks like we're waiting on one person to hit accept. But yeah, Crystalline Catastrophe is... Um, a very very easy queue and uh, it's one that players play quite often uh, so you can be fairly safe and secure knowing that you are going to get other players that are going to play it actually that's what something I should explain um, or any of the PvE queues when you queue up for any of those missions you are going to be playing alongside other STO players. So they're not solo missions. Uh, all of them are either 5-man, 10-man, or 20-man missions. Uh, granted, there's only a small handful of missions that are 20-man missions, and even smaller handful that are 10-man missions, but the majority um, are 5-man missions. And uh, the other members of your team will consist of uh, other players in Star Trek Online. If you are teamed up with anybody, like a friend or uh, maybe a fleet mate, um, when you queue up, you will be queuing them up as well, assuming that you are the team leader. Okay, so we're in here now, and as you guys can see up ahead, see right here, uh, we have what we call the giant snowflake, the crystalline entity. And uh, around here, then, we have a number of Tholians as well that we um, will also get firing upon us. Now, it is very important to realize that your 
main objective and only objective is to destroy the crystalline entity. Do not concern yourself with the Tholians, okay? Um, the Tholians are not part of your objective in any make, shape or form. And a lot of players make the classic mistake of engaging the Tholians rather than the Crystalline Entity and ultimately uh, don't do very well in this queue. Uh, the other thing is, once the Crystalline Entity gets down to approximately 70%, as it just did now, see this warning here on the left hand side, it indicates that the Entity is absorbing energy and that we are no longer doing any damage to it. Uh, there's a bar here on the right hand side that displays not only the Crystalline Entity's health, but also its progression towards um, reaching uh, the critical mass for um, expanding the energy that it just absorbed. Um, so there's one of those at approximately 70%, the other one is at approximately 30%. It will repeat and do again. And it is very important for you to uh, keep that in mind because um, if you don't have high hit points, when the crystalline entity stops absorbing energy, it disperses it out in a giant glass wave and it will do significant damage to you and maybe even blow up your ship. And one of the objectives is don't lose more than 30% of ships during the absorb and pulse phase, uh, which as we can see here, there it is now. Crystalline energy charge, it's absorbing energy, it's building, it's building, it's building, and uh, it's about halfway now, and we'll see a giant pulse wave come out from the crystalline energy now in a minute. There it is there. And look, that took away 50% of our health, that one pulse wave. It can do major damage. Escorts usually can't sustain that hit. Uh, because I'm in a cruiser, uh, I have a little bit better chance of sustaining that hit. Um, oh crap, I didn't get to Miracle Worker quick enough. No matter. Um, so yeah, your main objective and your only objective is to fire upon the Crystalline Entity. Completely ignore everything else. It is only there to distract you because you could stay in here for forever and a day and be fighting the Tholians and the mission will never end until you kill the Crystalline Entity. That is your objective, not killing the Tholians, okay? So keep that in mind when you guys uh, do this queue yourselves. And we have it down to 9% now, 8%, so we're doing quite well. 4%, it's almost dead. There we go. And we got third place. That's a nice little bonus. Okay, so upon successful completion of any PvE queue, you will be given the option then to uh, choose um, a type of mark for whatever is available for that mission. Uh, in this case, we have the option of fleet marks and we have the option of Nukara marks. As we can see, both of these are purple, indicating that we are eligible for the daily bonus. So if I'm going to pick new car marks this time, and you'll see them appear down here in the bottom left hand corner. There we go, we got some Dilithium, we got some Specialization Experience, we got some Expertise, uh, we got some fleet mar one, five Fleet Marks, we got a big chunk of new car marks, and an R&D um, box, which we will talk about in a later episode. So that's the mission complete, we successfully completed it. Uh, we failed on one of our objectives, um, but that's okay. That's you know, nothing wrong with that at all. So we just leave the map now. <coughs> Excuse me. 
So the question becomes, uh, what do you do with reputation marks? And if I click on the Assets tab here when I open my inventory, we can see uh, I have a large number of marks here already. Um, there are 12 different reputations, and the, the, these are what they are. Uh, there's Omega marks, which are part of the reputation. There are Nakara marks, which are part of the reputation. Romulan marks, Dyson, Undine, Delta, Iconian, Terran, Temporal, Lucari, Competitive, and Gamma. This is what is currently in the game. And you need these marks in order to progress within the different reputation systems. So I'm going to open up my character sheet and if we click on reputation up on the very top, click that tab, we can see down along the left hand side here we have 12 reputations. So a reputation uh, is a mean... how do I explain this? It is there's a number of benefits from the various reputation campaigns. Um, I suppose that's the best way of putting it. Uh, this is a reputation as it normally looks. All right, it's at uh, at tier zero and uh, zero reputation points in this. Um, you can complete or make progress within that reputation by running uh, daily reputation projects and to do that simply all you have to do is click here and uh, we can see down here uh, or here it says daily if we look at the rewards we can see it gives us two and a half thousand gamma reputation it gives us 340 delithium more and a gamma equipment uh, tier zero requisition um, if we, uh, let's see, um, alright, I'm going to go to Romulan first. Um, now, you may notice that this time uh, it says we will get 5,000 Romulan Republic reputation as opposed to the 2,500 that we were getting here for the Gamma reputation. And I'll explain that why uh, in a few minutes. First thing is, anyway, we want to get this project going. So I'm going to click on select and I'm going to put two projects and we can see that both of them have been added here to the list. And it needs a number of resources in order to complete that daily project. So it's 15,000 energy credits, 2,000 expertise and 30 Romulan marks. Ta-da! And that project is now on a 20 hour cooldown. So in 20 hours time we will be able to collect that project and this will progress up to here uh, given that uh, we will be rewarded with 5000 uh, Romulan uh, reputation experience. Now the reason why we are getting 5000 Romulan reputation experience on this one uh, compared to the two and a half thousand that we get from this one is because as a Jemadar, a, a Vanguard Jemadar, uh, all of my reputations are what they call sponsored. Um, so normally to complete a reputation from tier zero all the way to tier five, uh, it takes 40 days or 40 projects, okay, to go all the way from tier zero all the way to tier five doing that one project once every 20 hours that's 40 days to go all the way there however if you have any alt characters or additional characters that have already completed let's say all the reputations then those characters can burn off what is called a sponsorship token and see this thing here in my inventory gamma reputation sponsorship token this is something that i made on an alt character of mine and I've sent it through my account bank and claimed it here on this guy and if I go to gamma reputation and go down to the upgrades tab here we see the first project is claim sponsorship double gamma task force reputation XP bonus so basically we just slot that project and then we put in that gamma reputation token and if we look down here now this will say 5,000 gamma reputation experience instead of uh, 2,500. 
That's because we are now sponsored for this particular reputation. And that's why uh, the Romulan one was giving us 5,000 from the get-go uh, as opposed to 2,500. Uh, because Van Gamma Vanguard Gemadar are automatically sponsored for all reputations except for the Gamma Task Force reputation. Um, as a Gamma Vanguard character, you also get uh, Task Force Omega already completed for you. You get Nukara Strike Force already completed for you, and you get the Iconium Resistance already completed for you. I believe, depending on what career you choose, i.e. Tech, Engineer, or Science, it will determine which reputations are completed for you. So that can vary depending on what career uh, you pick as a Vanguard Gemadar. Now, not a normal Gemadar. A normal Gemadar will only have two reputations complete and none of the other reputations will be sponsored you will have to sponsor each one of them yourself but as a vanguard gemma there they're already sponsored um right so that's uh, reputations and leveling them up um as you've seen there when we completed this project uh we got this item here which is a new romulus equipment requisition uh, every time you kick off a um, daily project, you will get, excuse me, you will get a re requisition um, for that particular reputation. And basically what is in it is a random piece of gear for that particular reputation. So if I double click on it, we can see here I got an inhibiting Polar on split beam rifle, Mark 12, damage times 2, rare. Okay? If I click on the Romulan one that I got, we can see that I got a Romulan plasma dual heavy cannons, Mark 11, crit H times 2, and proc. Very rare. Uh, and every time you do one of these projects, uh, you get some item from that reputation, whatever it may be. Uh, it's just a random piece of gear. Now, my advice to you is, um, if and only if the items that you get from all of these uh, requisition boxes, if they are an upgrade for your ship, then by all means use them, okay? You can actually uh, fire ahead and you can uh, use them on uh, your build. However, if it doesn't work or you know build into your builds, like let's say you get a plasma weapon, but you're using uh, tetrion weapons, for example, then there is no point in putting plasma weapons uh, from your ship or from these reward packs onto your ship, because. Uh, that's not that's not your build you know your your, your build is uh, uh, what did I say Tetrion was it um, but if by all means it works into your build and it is an upgrade then yeah sure stick it on your ship but be warned that not every single one of them will necessarily work for your ship I mean like look at the stuff that I'm getting here now some of it isn't bad but it's majority uh, ground weapons um, now what I do is uh, I vendor trash all this stuff because it's not that great uh, and reputation gear is the most expensive gear number one to purchase in game and number two to upgrade in game is the most expensive gear. So um, I don't uh, uh, use it that often. However, uh, if I get any Mark 12 very rare weapons like this biomolecular phaser pulse wave assault Mark 12 crit H.3 and proc weapon, I will keep that to one side and I will uh, equip my bridge officers with it. Uh, because until I get my end game gear, which is probably going to come from the fleet, uh, I will uh, use this for the time being. Um, Right, uh, as you level up the different reputations, each one of them at uh, each new tier level unlocks 
a new piece of gear that is available for purchase. So if we go to Icone in here and we click on Tier 1, we can see we get new equipment projects. Very rare Iconium Resistance Personal Shield Mark 12 ground set. And very rare Sustained Radiant Field. That's a console. All right, which means that we can run projects for either of those and we can purchase that gear. And if we click here and we scroll down past this, look, there's your Iconium Resistance Armor. Here's your Iconium Resistance Personal Shield that we mentioned a minute ago. Iconium Resistance Pulse Wave Assault, Mark 13. Uh, Iconium Barrier Generator. And look, here's the sustain Sustained Radiant Field that we talked about. Um, if we go to Tier 2, we can see we get very rare Iconium Resistance Deflector Array, Mark 12. Uh, very rare Advanced Radiant Quantum Torpedo Launcher Mark 12. If we go to Tier 3, it unlocks even more stuff, Tier 4 more stuff, and Tier 5 more stuff. So your goal is ideally, actually what I just done, which was to set up these projects together all at the same time. See how they're all uh, on cooldown? And um, because I have them sponsored now, uh, instead of taking 40 days to complete, to go from Tier 0 to Tier 5, it will only take me 20 days to go from Tier 0 to Tier 5 because I'm sponsored and I'm getting double the experience for each project that I do. Also, when you get to a new tier level, you also unlock two traits. As you can see here, at Tier 1, these are two traits. And when we get to Tier 2, here's another two traits. Here's another two traits, another two traits, and then finally an active trait uh, is what they call the one at tier five. And these traits are used down here in your space reputation and in your ground reputation. And when you think about it, um, if I go back to reputations, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, eight and eight is 16, eight is 24, eight is 32, eight is 40. There is, just look at that, like, uh, there's what? Nearly a hundred traits available for you to choose from just for getting all of your reputations up to tier five. It's a lot of traits. And believe me, it can make a huge difference to your effectiveness and your build, both for space and ground. Now, the other thing I want to point out is the other reason why you will want to advance your reputations is each one of them, when you get it to tier 5, gives you a big bonus reward payout at the very end. And that is 32,000 dilithium ore, 750 marks for that particular reputation. So let's say a Dyson Joint Command, Dyson Rep, okay? When I get to tier 5 and do the final upgrade, I will get 750 Dyson Marks. When I get Terran Task Force up to tier 5, I will get 750 Terran Task Force Marks. Okay, And each one of them, every single one of them, work the same way. Um, you get a big chunk of energy credits. I think it's like 40,000 energy credits. You get a big payout of XP as well. Uh, but the real most important one is the 32,000 dilithium ore that you get um, for each of the reputations. There is over 300,000 dilithium waiting for you just for having all of these at tier 5. That's not including any of the dilithium you get while you're building up your marks or any of the dilithium that you get from... Uh, completing the, the, these daily projects because remember the rewards down here for doing the daily projects you get 340 dilithium more every time you claim one of these and complete the project um, right uh, the only exception to that rule which doesn't really matter to us here now is uh, Task Force Omega Task Force Omega does not give you 32,000 dilithium, unfortunately, but it doesn't matter to us because the reputation has already been completed for us as a Vanguard Gemadera. Uh, but if you are not, if you do not have it complete, uh, be warned that Terran Task Force actually gives you only 9,000 dilithium ore and only 500 Omega Marks as opposed to the 750. 
So be warned in that. That one, that's the black sheep in the family. But every other reputation gives you thirty-two thousand lithium ore and seven hundred and fifty reputation marks. Um, when you have a reputation complete, uh, you can click on the store item, and you can purchase a wide variety of uh, weapons and um, equipment. Um, from the reputation store. Uh, be warned that every single one of them, uh, whether it's space or ground, they cost dilithium to purchase and they're freaking expensive. They're very, very expensive. I mean, look look at these turrets. 22,500 dilithium ore um, for a single turret. Uh, my advice is stay the hell away from this store. Um, you can purchase higher quality, better weapons and cheaper weapons from the fleet. That's my advice. You can, s even if you have to get your fleet credits by donating do dilithium into your fleet, you would only have to donate, let's say, ten thousand dilithium ore into your fleet to get ten thousand fleet credits. And uh, it'd probably only cost you about 5,000 dilithium ore and 10,000 fleet credits. So that's a combined total of 15,000 dilithium, as opposed to the 22,500 dilithium uh, that you've seen uh, it was going to cost there to pick up uh, any of those weapons. So my advice is stay out of these stores, uh, unless you really, really want to. It, of course, it is your right, but I can only give you you know, the, the best information and it's up to you whether or not you want to heed it. Um, right, uh, as you've seen, I have already been working on these reputations. I have built up a lot of marks already uh, for a vast majority of them. Um, there's a few that are lacking behind, like Competitive and Lucari, and that's the next thing I want to show you. Um, because I created this character when the Gamma recruitment event was going on. That meant that this character is a Gamma recruit. And as a Gamma recruit, there are a number of objectives uh, that are given to me. And once complete, I can claim or redeem bonus rewards for having completed those objectives. And that's what this device here is, a Dominion Transponder. And if we double click on it, we can see a list pops up, and basically uh, these are the different goals. So these are rank ones, okay? Um, reach level 65. Gamma recruit reach level 65, and basically once you reach level 65, you get 250 of any of the following reputation marks, and all I have to do is hit claim, and there it is down there. Uh, this one. Complete a queue, as in a PVE queue, that we just done there a little while ago. Claim. This one. Complete an advanced queue, which we also done a little while ago. Claim. And we claim that one. This one. Complete 25 queues. Again, pretty simple. We've completed 25 queues. The 100 one. Uh, complete 100 queues. We haven't uh, completed that yet, but... Any cues that we do add on to that, and eventually we will get it. This one, uh, develop your specializations. Um, spend one specialization point in any of the following specializations. We have done that, so let's hit claim. Uh, spend five points in any of the following specializations. We've done that as well, so we'll claim that. Uh, Admiralty. Reach level 1 in any of the following Admiralty campaigns. Again, we've done that. And there's our prizes there. We get some one-time use ships. Uh, reach level 5 in any one of the following Admiralty campaigns. Boom. We'll claim that. Seems to be a little bit of server lag. Still a bit of server lag. It'll, it'll come, though. It'll come. Right, uh, let's open up some of these boxes. Um, right, I want uh, t -t 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 competitive. I want competitive marks. 
because I want to boost that one up. And I want, let's see, uh, that's just the 50 one. I don't want that yet. That's the 100. There's another 250 somewhere. There we are. 250. I think we go with competitive again. Yep. All right. That's competitive done. And looks like we also got the uh, the other reward there for the level five admiralty. Okay. So duty officer commendations. Achieve commendation ranks with duty officers. Com uh, reach commendation rank one in any of the duty officer commendation categories. We've got it. So we'll claim it. We've also reached rank two. So we'll claim that. And finally, then we have these ones. Uh, learn, learn, learn information in the story mission Stormcloud. Basically, these are all the same. Um, you, you basically just have to complete the the brand new Jemadar missions, and you get rewards uh, for completing those missions. Uh, basically, that's what it is. And we've completed all of them, so we can. Uh, uh, claim them all now, which is fantastic. Right. So this is something that we will be coming back to as we progress further and further on uh, in these uh, Gamma Recruit objectives. Uh, there are 40 of them. We have 17 of them complete already. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll come back to this later on in the series as we complete more of the objectives. Um, I'm trying to think, is there anything else to do with reputations that I wanted to show you guys? Um, that's pretty much it. Um, it is very possible, as you've seen, I have built up all the marks I need in order to complete uh, all of these reputations. Uh, I'm already set with that. Um, and in 20 days, I will be... Uh, completing all of these reputations and claiming the tier 5 reward for all of them. So you probably won't hear anything about this again for a few episodes until I actually get that finished. But that's only 20 days away, uh, which isn't a whole lot of time really. Um, probably in about, I don't know, 10 episodes I'll probably have it finished. Um, so that will be the next time that we uh, talk about reputations. But in that meantime, I will be doing these daily projects once a day, every day, and leveling up the different reputation stores. Um, I can tell you now that uh, my end game builds, you know, like for, uh, well, maybe not so much ground, but space, is going to consist of a number of reputation items particularly consoles and uh, fleet gear. Um, that is what my uh, build is going to require. So once I have these all leveled up, I will then start making purchases within the various different reputations uh, for whatever gear it is that I want. And I, yeah, I'll just, you know, I'll buy, I'll buy whatever I want from the various reputation stores. Um, so it will be a mixture of fleet and reputation gear uh, that I will have on my ship. Uh, probably with some story uh, gear in there as well. Maybe the odd piece of crafted um, uh, might slip in there too as well. Um, but that's it. Yeah, thanks a million for watching folks. I hope you all enjoyed this episode. Um, I will unbox uh, the rest of these uh, off camera. You don't need to see me doing that. Basically, I'm just going to build up uh, Lucari because that one was a little bit low and uh, maybe a tad more to uh, Romin and Rep. But apart from that, um, I don't have uh, anything else to build up. But anyway, yeah, thanks a million for watching this episode. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like. That would help me out enormously. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. And as always, please subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already. My name is Winters, and I'll catch you next time. So until then, take care.